Black Ops. Tactical espionage wargaming in a terrifying all too near future. Let's take a look at the sides first. This will be my first game of Black Ops, and we're just going to do a pretty straight fight here. Uh, what you're looking at here are police professionals. They have a shooting, it's a roll, it's a target number system. So they have an accuracy of four. When they shoot, they got to get a four or higher. Their close combat skill is a four. Their dedication is a four, and they save on a four plus. They're all wearing body armor. Normally it's a five up, but they're all wearing body armor, so it becomes a four up. He is tough, which means he saves on a three up. They're all packing assault rifles. They are law enforcement officials, and they're going after the worst of the worst today. Uh, these guys have batons, which is going to put them in good stead in close quarters combat. Uh, they, he has a sniper rifle. It's actually one guy, but these are uh, Rebel Minis figures, so you know they're cast as the two. Sniper spotter. Uh, we're just going to call it one base, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then the leader there is a professional. He saves on a 3+, plus and he has an assault rifle. Uh, the sniper ignores all negative modifiers for shooting at distance. Uh, it is a card activation system. So what I've done is I've pulled out all of the aces, the black kings, and the black jacks. The soldiers are going to activate on jacks. The sniper activates on a king. And the leader, or ace, is going to activate when we draw an ace. I did the same thing for the red cards. So let's take a look at the opposition force. The police force are classed as professionals. And these guys here in the red hats are classed as fanatics. They are in the diner, and they are the, it's 2020, they're the last two, four, six, eight, nine men not to have trusted those fine folks that brought us the litamide and asbestos-laden baby powder. They do not want to get the, uh, you know, the thing that I can't talk about because the YouTube algorithm will, will block this video, apparently. So what we're looking at here are fanatics. Uh, we've got five soldiers. That's these guys in the baseball caps. They all have an accuracy of five, combat of five, dedication of three. They save on a five. No body armor here. The two fellers in the red cowboy hats. Now, those are veterans, so they have uh, shooting and fighting of four. Uh, they're all carrying assault rifles. This is America, obviously. So obviously, <laughs> what kind of American walks around without an assault rifle? Give me a break. Here, we've got a sniper. Again, he activates on a king. He's got accuracy of five, fighting of five, dedication of four. He does have a sniper rifle. He does have body armor, so he actually saves on a four up. And then we've got a leader. That's the one guy not wearing a hat right here. He has an assault rifle. He's tough. He's got the body armor, so save of three. He's also a leader, which means, you know, activation things can happen. He's got a dedication. Again, a dedication of three. So... Just as many guys, not nearly as good, 50 points worth of dudes. They're going to start. The rules for this scenario are they're going to start inside the diner here. And I can turn this roof back around so you can see the, the purdy terrain. And let's go ahead and take a look at the terrain here real quick. As I said, we've got a diner here in the center. We've got some a couple of swamps, the grasslands. You know, we've got the, the railroad is elevated. So the railroad blocks line of sight for anyone that's not standing on top, or it's, it, it kind of counts as cover. The chain link fence does not count as cover. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. The fence is broken right here. It's the only place to move through without having to make a check. And then, of course, here as well. Uh, everything else, you know, basically, it's, it's, it's basic. You guys are war gamers. You get it. I don't, need, I don't need to belay the point. Belabor the point. Excuse me. Uh, as I said, the scenario that we're doing is taken directly... From the rule book, it's going to be uh, scenario C, breakout. The attacker, that's these guys, who don't want to be shot, they just want to get away. Uh, the attacking team must break out of the net. Uh, the defender has one and a half time. So it's a 75-point professional force against a 50-point fanatic force. And uh, to win, the attacker must exit with at least half his force by any board edge. Any other outcome is the defender's victory. Uh, still, that's, that's it. Wait a minute. So now here's the question. Who's going to set up first? In a regular game, if you were playing two-player, you would use blinds. Remember, the game is called Black Ops. And as we go forward and play additional games, we may start using these. Problem is that there's just me. Uh, the game also includes such things as stealth missions with blinds. 
uh, blinds and noise markers. So normally what you would do is you would pull out a pair of the same cards. For example, for uh, I can pull out the two black nines. And we may wind up doing this in the future at some point. So there's a couple of black nines. And what I would do is I would say, okay, you know what? These two guys are going to be on that card. And then I would mix up several cards. I would, I would have just as many blinds as I have the regular cards. So here you see I've got a black nine and a red nine. And so I, as the defender, would say, okay, I want these two guys to start over here on this side of the railroad track. So I'd play this card face down. And I would move this card... And oh, I put my blind over here. And until they open fire or are spotted by the opposition force, these guys don't appear. So the opposition force will have, and again, remember, I might have eight cards on the table I'm moving around. Only four have guys under them. So maybe they have a guy coming, he finally spots, oh, look, it's blind. Oh, no, I didn't know that was blind. Well, I guess I better check this one. Here we go. So wherever that card is, that's where these guys can deploy. You see? Now, in a one-player game, is that really going to work? Maybe. We're certainly going to try it in the future. But for today, I just wanted to kind of highlight before we get started that this is definitely a game of stealth missions. And that's one of the clever ways that Guy Bowers has implemented stealth. The other way is when you've got an infiltration mission, you've got sentries that move randomly, unless there's noise, in which case they'll start to kind of wander towards the noise. And if they stumble upon a dead body, then, hey, they'll raise the alarm. Things get more complicated. We're not doing that today. Because that's in a layer of complexity that, frankly, having never played the game before, I'm just not prepared to accept for today's game. Instead, what I'm going to do is set up my... And we know these guys are starting in here. So we're going to set up our, our security teams who are trying to gun down these guys before they can run away. So let me get him set up, and we'll be right back. I've got our ace leader over here behind this tree, our sniper down here, and then I've got our seven cops are hiding. Uh, one's behind this tree here, one in the tall grass, one behind that truck, one over there on the fence, one there, one here, and one here. So that's our seven. Um, the game calls for boards that are 48 inches by 48 inches. This board is 36 by 24, so it's a rather small board, which is going to advantage these guys. I'm okay with that. It's a quick game. Not a big deal. I could always use centimeters. A lot of people do that when they're playing in 15 millimeters, but then our board goes from 48 by 48 to 60. It's like 68 by 90, which is enormous. So we're not going to do that this time. We're going to try using the straight up inches. Most of these weapons are going to fire across the entire board. It's okay. It's a modern day. Not too concerned about it. Who's going to get to go first is the question. Now, I uh, allowed these guys to start 10, well, how, how, what's 10, inch, 10 centimeters? Uh, four inches onto the board, which shrinks it even further. Like I said, we're going to use inches, and the question becomes, who gets to go first? The blue die is going to be for the boys in blue, the thin blue line, and the red die is going to be for the red hats. All right, red hats get to go first, and they're going to come pouring out. So the question is, which way are they going to go? How are they going to do this? Well, no, wait a minute. What am I talking about? See, I have been playing too much of your standard games. The way this game's activations work is card-driven. We're going to shuffle these cards up. Before we get to the turn order, let's take a look in here. I've got these guys set up exactly where they're going to start. I've got a veteran and a, a regular trooper on this side. I've got a veteran, two troopers here. I've got a trooper by this door and the leader by this door. Sniper and the other guy, the, the roll-up door is not going to roll up. Don't worry about that. So that's where they start. And we're going to go ahead and shuffle these up. Let me go ahead and zoom on out. We're going to shuffle these up. And I have no idea who's going first. All I know is that our table is a little too small for the game. So with a red jack, that means that our fanatics are going to get to move. Three inches and fire without penalty. Or become hidden. So you can move three inches is kind of your standard. Advance means move up to six inches and shoot with a minus one penalty. I think I'm going to go ahead and... Blah, 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 blah. Let's run one of these guys out here. Nine inches is how far you can go. So he bursts out the door. 
it's about eight inches to there and then it's another inch to here so he's gonna rush over to here we'll send these guys kind of this way now with an advance so our veteran is gonna advance to here and does he have a line of sight we gotta check that yep yeah. he's going to advance to here and he's going to advance to there um, we'll bring our sniper is going to come out. Where is he going to hide? Yeah, I want to hide him somewhere. He can move three inches. He's going to hide right here. And we'll use a blue hidden marker for you can't see me. Oh, no. You know what? The sniper doesn't get to go. The sniper acts on the kings. So you got to wait, bud. You got to wait your turn. He's going to come out three inches to here and he's going to open fire at this cop right there. Now, he is in bad shape because he's shooting at minus one because of the cover. Uh, the range is going to be an additional... Wait, is he going to shoot? I got to think about that. You know, it'd be nice if I had a quick reference sheet, but um, my printer is uh, kind of dumb. Let's take a look at this because if he is at a total of minus two, if he started at five on his shooting... For which he is. Well, I tell you what, let me just move everybody first. This is doing it kind of backwards, but uh, uh, I'm going to move him. Well, he can move three inches. I'm going to move him to here and take a shot there. Okay, so everybody that's going to move, nope, not, not you. You're going to move. We'll measure that too. Uh, you're going to move three inches to there, and then you get another six. So we'll bring you to here. All right, so now we have some shooting to do, and this guy can take a shot over here if he wants. I might move him a little bit more, though. See, the deal is cover gives you a minus one on the two hit. Well, it's actually a plus one on the toughness number. So the toughness number starts at five. It goes up by one to six because of range. What is it, 18 inches? So anything over nine inches. Yeah, you know what? I might as well go ahead and run him up to here. I think he's got the distance. Yep. I might as well because uh, he's going to have to roll a 7 on a d6. Now, the rules do have a way to do that, but it's complicated, so we're not going to do it. Uh, he ran... So we've got this guy here is starting with a target number of 4. So if he wants to shoot at that guy over there, he needs to roll a 6 to pull that off. And he does not. And then this guy is going to do... The, likewise, he's going to shoot over here... Now, he does need to roll a 7, so normally what you do is you roll, because he's 10 inches away. Um, I think it's a, you got to roll a pair of 6s. Uh, normally what you would do is uh, you'd cut the number of dice in half, rounding down if it's less than 1. Oh, it automatically misses, so he can't hit with that shot. That's all right. We like where he's at. I guess he just hunkers down right there. He moves 6 inches, that's all he can do. Now it's time for the the police to go um we're going to move let's start here and work our way clockwise okay i think what we want to do is um we'll move the three inches to kind of get this guy in cover and then he's shooting over here because he only moved three inches now anytime you move you don't have the aim bonus so his shooting accuracy is a four So that's where he starts. He's using an assault rifle. We're beyond nine inches. So he needs to roll a five or better. This guy is basically in cover from that direction. I don't think he's in cover from the sniper. So we're gonna give him cover. That means we're gonna need a four, it goes to a five, goes to a six. So we're rolling a six to hit and he hits. So then you have to roll to see if that guy takes damage. He's got a save of a five or a six. He's not wearing any armor, and he fails his save, so he is removed. So that's the first casualty among the fanatics. Then this guy can go ahead and move up three inches to here, and he's got a shot. Stand up in the grass there, guy. Now, he is an obscuring terrain, so that does give him a minus one to be hit. But he basically pops up and says, blam, at that guy. Because he's within... 
He only moved three inches, so there's no penalty there. He is within nine inches, so he doesn't have any penalty there. So he is going to hit on a four up, and he hits. And that guy makes his five up save, and he's okay. Uh, then we've got a guy here who is kind of facing the wrong way. He's going to move three inches and take a shot here. That is within nine inches. Yep. There's no cover. The chain link fence only blocks movement. So that's a hit, and that is an unsuccessful save. So that's two guys gone. Uh, you know, if you don't, oh, I know what it is. If you don't move, you can take two shots. Everybody's moved so far. Since he's not moving, oh, you know what? These guys probably could have taken two shots too. Oh, no, it's only if you don't move, and they all move. So if he doesn't move, which he won't, he can actually roll twice to shoot this guy, which he needs to do because that guy is at long range and um, behind cover, so he needs a six to hit. So those are two misses. We've got a guy over here, same thing. He's going to shoot. It's going to be long range, needing a six to hit. And then we've got a guy over here who has no real line of sight. So he can move over here, but he only gets one shot, and he's going to need a six to hit. Plus one for range. Wait, no, maybe he only needs a five to hit. Yeah, he only needs, he, he still hits on a five. So that's a hit on this veteran who's going to save on a four up now because he's in cover. Normally it's a five. That toughness number goes down by one because of the cover, so he's okay. And I think that's all of them. We did him, 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 him. Oh, I think I took a shot with my leader, which was a mistake. The guy without the guy hiding down here was a leader. But I still feel like I'm missing somebody. I did one, two. Oh, there's a guy over here too. That's what it is. This guy is gonna slide down and take a shot at him. He is in cover. Uh, so no bonus. He did move. He only gets one shot. That's gonna be a miss. Um, that is within nine inches. So there's no penalty for range, but there's a minus one recovery. He needed a five, didn't get it, and now we're done. We did all seven of our one, two, three, four, five, six. Where's my seventh boy? Right here. He's hiding behind this tree. These guys are too, too well camouflaged for me. Uh, let's go ahead and run him up. Six, he can take a shot at minus one. We'll put him there. Let's see, does he have a shot? Which one of these old guys? He does not have a shot. I guess what we could do, let's bring him up to here so he's kind of hiding behind the, the railroad. And he Does he have a shot there? He does not. The line of sight is just not working out for him. Um... All right, that being the case, let's go ahead and run him nine inches to here so that he can cover that direction. Now, in this game, in this game, the, the direction you're facing is important because you can only shoot in that front arc. Moving on to card number three. Now our red boys get to go, and I wonder if we can get him. He's only three inches off. He's going to just race right by. Ciao. So we got one guy off. How many points of how many points of these guys? 25 points, and each one of those guys is eight points. No. Each one of those soldiers is uh blah, 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 five points, six for the veterans. So that's five points. We only need to get 25 more points off the board. Um moving, moving. Uh let's whoo. This is going to be harder than I thought. Um, they, we might have gone the wrong way. We might have been better off running down into the sniper. All right, he's going to try to climb over the fence. Uh, first things first, let's take a shot with him. Uh, he's going to shoot at that guy over there. It's not, oh, is it nine inches away? Yeah, he's within range. So he is hitting on a five up, six. Oh, no, okay. So this time we're going to do suppression fire because I want to see how that works. This guy gets hit with suppression. It's a minus it's a minus one to the target number because you're not really looking to hurt the guy. Now that guy has a choice to make. He is suppressed, so he can either take the hit 
which means roll, like, make the save to see if he took damage. Or he can keep his head down and hide from the fire. It remains where it is. Let's see. Roll the hit. Each of it marked instead. When he's activated. So he's got a little suppression marker on him. And then when he's activated, he's got a choice to make. What that does is it allows this guy an opportunity to leap over that fence. And when you try to climb over a fence, there's a fun little table that you roll on. Okay. So our veteran in the red hat is going to roll a three. Success. Obstacle cross. Movement end. So he stops right there. This guy... Zoom in on him a little bit so you can see the guy hiding behind the black SUV there is also going to. He's going to move one inch. No, he's going to move four inches to there. Obstacle crossed. Model may move an additional three inches. So basically, he's going to move to there. Uh, the walls roll a D6. May move up to three inches. Uh, if your militia plus on the modifier for two models at the same point is intended the climber give, being given a foot up. So if you actually have two models, you get a minus one. So they can both move. Model may complete remaining movement. Now here's a question. The modifier, model should start. So that's six inches of movement for both of them. Which means they can both still shoot, and they're both going to do so. They're both going to shoot at this guy here. Um, I'm just going to roll both at the same time. It's about It should be the same range band, and it is. They're both within 9 inches. I am going to count him as being in cover. Oh, you can't even see him. Let me pull up so you can see that guy. So it's, it's this model and this model shooting at that model. And the, um, i got to roll separately, because he's got an accuracy of 5, which becomes a... Oh, and he's got an accuracy of, okay, so he can't actually, now that I think about it, because he's at a 7-up. But him shooting here is going to be, uh, he's got an accuracy of 4, but he moved, which means it becomes a, and he's in cover, so that becomes a 6. So he can hit him on a 6. They got him. So that guy is now got to take a save. And he fails it, so he goes bye-bye, which really helps. It really opens the door for our... Is there anybody else? Yeah, he's got a shot. He's going to take a shot down here. And it's going to be long range, plus what? Now, because he hasn't moved, he can take an aim shot. Let's zoom back out so I can show you that sniper. Uh, so the guy in the diner is shooting at this sniper down by the cards. He is further than nine inches away. He, you know what we're going to do? We're going to fire suppression fire as well. So it's going to be a total of minus one for the cover. I got that backwards. It's plus one to the target for the cover. So he needs a six or better. It's going to be plus one for the distance, which means seven. But it's going to be minus one to the target because he's firing suppression and minus one because it is an aimed shot. Can you fire aimed suppression fire? Suppression fire or aimed shot. You got to choose. Okay. Well, hell, that being the case, he's just going to run. If that's all he's got is a six, we're going to go nine inches. He's just going to hoof it right over to here. Might as well, right? And now everybody's gone. Red Joker means this leader gets to go. And he's going to advance three inches to here and take a shot at this guy. Our leader has an accuracy of four. And he's got an assault rifle, so he can only make the one shot, but it's less than nine inches. The guy's in cover, so it's going to be um, five because of the cover. He only moved three inches, so he hits on a five or better. That's a miss. No problem. Next up. It's going to be the Black King. That's this guy who is going to take a shot at the leader here. And there's no bonus for distance. There's, he's not in any kind of cover. So it's going to be a straight four up. That's a hit. Our leader fails his save. And now he's out of the game as well. 
We're still sitting on only five points off the board. Then our red ace gets to go. That's this sniper over here who does not have a line of sight on anybody. He's going to shift over to the doors, which means he doesn't get to aim. He's going to take a shot here at the guy who's in cover, basically. We're going to do a little sniper duel. But he only hits on a six because he moved. So that's a miss. Next up is going to be the Red King, who is dead. And then the Black King. So now this leader gets to go. And he's going to move nine inches. Let's bring him over to here. The... Oh, no, no. No, no, no. Black King means he gets to take another shot. Aim shot at this guy. It's going to be a miss. Then the ace gets to go. He's going to rush over to here. Then that ace is dead. That's the red leader. The black jack. Oh, bad news. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is what are we going to do with... Uh, we've got... Um, we're gonna ooh, we'll move one inch to there and eight to there. We're gonna tighten the net. We don't have any shots here, so we're gonna move him up to, oh uh, boy. All right, we're gonna move him to there. And he does have a shot at that guy. It's gonna be at a total of minus two. He only hits on a six. We're gonna call that a miss. Uh, we've got a guy over here who has no more line of sight, so we'll run him up to here. And then we've got, so we did this guy, this guy, this guy. We've got, he's got a shot. He's not going to move. He's going to take two shots here. That's going to be two at four up. Both of them hit. So he's got to make two saves. And he's only able to make one, so he goes down. And is there anybody else? Yeah, so what's he going to do? He's going to go ahead and just duck back to complicate their life. So this goes bye-bye. He does not have to make a, uh, a save check to see if he's wounded. Basically, that suppression marker just said, listen, you can't do anything this turn. Now, he could roll. If he really wanted to act, he could take it. He could just suck it up and take the, the hit, roll that, see if he rolls his four-up save. But we're going to leave him there to discourage these guys. And uh, maybe do something a little wonky the next round. This guy does not have a good line of sight. And unfortunately, that means he's going to have to advance to here. And he's going to be at a minus one to his shot. So he only hits on a five now. He's shooting this guy's veteran in the back who makes his save. And that's it for the cops. Red King is the sniper who's going to shoot down here. He now has, he's now going to hit on a five up. Two hits means this sniper has to say, make two saves. And he fails one of them, so he's out of the game. Black Joker means this leader gets to go. So now we can move him six inches. We can advance nine to here. And then the last card is going to be the Black Ace, who is... Wait a minute. Yeah, that's that's this guy again, who now can shoot at the Sniper. He's got two shots in cover. Aimed shots is going to be four up. or both going to be hits. One hit, the save is going to be on a four up, and that's going to be a failure. So the Sniper goes down as well. And things are not looking good for Team Red Hat here. In fact, I, I don't think Red, Hat, Red Hats can win. They've only got 17 points left on the board. So the, the diner is all shot up. Um, Red King is no good. Black Joker means he can go. Is there anybody left in there? Nope. So we will advance him six inches to here, and he can take a shot at this guy. With a lot of minuses, that's going to be a miss. The Black King is dead. Red Ace is dead. The Black Ace, that's the guy in here. Now we can take two shots. He's hitting on a three up. Two hits. He's got a save. Uh, that's a failure, so he dies. 
and now the game really is over. Um, except that I want to see something here real quick. So the blackjacks can go. He's going to charge into hand-to-hand -hand combat because I want to see how close quarters combat works. Um, now it takes a full action to sw swap your weapon. So this duel here is going to be. We'll go ahead and kind of zoom in on it. So we can. As you can tell, we zoomed in. So I want to see this. Now the way this works is both guys are going to make a close quarters combat check. They're both at fours. Because they are in the open, whoever has the longer weapon wins ties. But we'll see who makes their check. They're both checking at four plus. So Red Hat makes his check, and he fails his. And I think that means the attacker succeeds and wounds the defender, which forces a save on him. And it's going to be your standard five-up save. So because he failed the save, he is down. Now, close quarters combat in this game is a little more complicated than you might think because there's a lot of wonky little stuff that goes on. If you are in the open, whoever has the longer weapon wins. But if you're inside close quarters area, sandwiched between two cars, let's say, I'll turn there. So if you're if you're in tight confines, whoever has the shorter weapon wins. So a knife can beat a a sword or a baton, let's say. Now, the, that's the other interesting thing, is that a knife is much better at penetrating modern body armor, at least as far as these rules are concerned, whereas a baton is much better against an unarmored opponent. He had a baton. It would take an action to switch to the baton and then another action to go bonk him on the head. But I gave him the improvised weapon, so he's not attacking... Both of these guys are using their, basically using their rifle butt. Otherwise, it would be a... It would be a what did he get? So he rolled a four, which is a save fail. Otherwise, he would have succeeded if he didn't have any kind of an improvised weapon. Alternatively, if he had, like, a baseball bat that he was lugging around and conked him on the head, that save would only be successful on a six. So it shouldn't come up too often, but in the stealth missions, it's a lot more likely that it does. Because, of course, in the stealth missions, you're going to want to close to close quarters. You're going to want to whip out that knife and, and shank a guy where he can't raise the alarm. In upcoming episodes, we're going to take a look at that. But we're done with this. We've kind of played out and seen how quick the game goes. We only got through the deck one time before the game was over. Everybody got to take just a couple of actions, and it was a resounding victory for the forces of, of uh, law enforcement because only one guy got away to spread the infection of the unspecified virus of unknown origin. Uh, coming up, what we'll do is we'll run through a full Black Ops secret campaign, complete with solo missions. We'll use blinds. We'll try to use infiltration missions and all of that. But for today, now that we've kind of worked out the kinks of the basic rules, I think we're a little more comfortable. And we'll meet next time. Until then, I'm praying for you.